They buried us. They didn't know. We were seeds. The first time that I heard that saying, it resonated in my soul, and it gave words to my story. You see, in two short sentences, it tells you the story of my life. Me. I was seeds. Or perhaps I felt I had seeds. But they were buried, long forgotten, underneath a pile of unfortunate circumstances and statistics that predicted my limitations and the likelihood of my failure. I am the daughter of Mexican immigrants. My parents worked in the fields in the central California Valley. Growing up, educators often dismissed me as somebody who would never go to college or amount to much. And I believed them. At 17, I joined the Navy. Back when it was not only a job, it was an adventure. <laughs> but that adventure came with a hefty price tag for me. As a survivor of military sexual trauma, I found myself in a place where I couldn't stand to be in my own skin, and I couldn't live inside my head, and I found comfort in the numbness and the darkness of alcohol. And there even came a point where I didn't care if I lived or if I died. But in my more lucid moments, I would get this gnawing suspicion that this wasn't who I was supposed to be. But that feeling was elusive. I just couldn't seem to grasp it. I couldn't seem to grasp it, not even when I found myself in the drunk tank at Las Colinas, a detention center for women in San Diego. Detention center. That's a fancy word for jail. I believe that everything happens right when it's supposed to and not one minute before. And for me, hope creeped in with the clarity of recovery. And perhaps it was the absence of mind-altering substances and poor coping skills, or perhaps it was a circle of people who loved me until I could tolerate myself, or maybe, it was those that lent me their lens so that I could see that I had not been buried. I had been planted. The dictionary describes hope as the feeling and a desire of wanting something to happen. And that is exactly what I felt. Hope encouraged this curiosity that I had to uncover who I could be. It had always been in here. It was just buried under shame and failures and the expectations of other people. And in the moment of wild faith, I found the courage to believe that there was nothing I couldn't do that I wanted to do. So at 40 years old, with five kids, in a family that was more tossed than blended, <laughs> an active duty husband and three failed attempts behind me, I decided to go back to college one more time. <laughs> now, returning to college was daunting. I was older, I was a tech challenge Gen Xer, <laughs> and I had never written a properly formatted APA paper in my entire life. <laughs> But I learned how to say, I, I don't know, and help me without shame. And I found out that we cannot receive with a closed heart or closed hands. And I was forced to open both. And receive, I did. Four years later, one day, one class, and yes, one properly formatted APA paper at a time, 
I earned my bachelor's degree in psychology with an emphasis in human services, and I am graduating summa cum laude this June. <laughs> As an undergrad, I found out so much about the human condition. I found out that some of us are born into circumstances that, for lack of better words, render us seeds that get tossed in the dirt and we hope something good comes from them. So I became curious about policies and the lack of accessibilities to the hope that I had found. And it was in those moments of frustration and sometimes downright anger that I discovered my purpose. I needed to take this gift of light and I needed to use it so that I could illuminate the path for so many others like me. But I had to do more. And so in June of last year, one more time, I fought the committee in my head that told me that I was not worthy or meant to. And I took a chance and I applied to grad school at Columbia University. I thought for sure I am not competitive. I am reaching for something that's far beyond who and what I am. Women like me, we don't go to Ivy League colleges. We go to jail. We end up in mental institutions or we die. But on a rainy Rhode Island evening in the car with my children, I received an email congratulating me on my acceptance to the Columbia University School of Social Work, where I am currently a student on the policy track. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. I am so grateful that my children were there in that moment, of the moment of hope anew, the minute there was redemption, and the moment that this little seed finally broke through the dirt and she reached for the light. And I hope that it stays with them forever so that they and you can remember that no matter how far down the scale we have gone, we can always find purpose in our struggles. I mean, <laughs> you're here listening to what was the most demoralizing moments of my life. You're receiving my story and you are gifting me purpose. And perhaps we're even planting seeds together. As I wrap this up, I want to invite you to explore your own planted seeds inside you. They are uniquely yours and they are there for a reason. Give them light by speaking them out loud. Water them with trust in what we cannot see, but we know. Embrace your journey, especially those moments when you think your little seed is never going to see the light. We often get to turn our messes into messages when we refuse to be defined by them. And lastly, I leave with some hope of my own. I hope that you too will take care of your seeds, that you will nurture them the same way that my parents did in the fields of the Salinas Valley with nothing but hope that something good would come from them. And today, I can say they did good. Thank you.